Hi, I'm Omar Rodriguez Lopez from the Mars Volta, and you're watching Toasted. Omar, welcome back to Amsterdam. Thank you, thank you very much. Hey, you lived here for a while, right? I lived here for two years, starting in 2005. Whatever made you move to Amsterdam, actually? Um, I just instinct, the first time we came to Europe in 98, I, I knew I would live here one day. And, and I think the most striking thing was the autonomy that the people of the city seemed to have, you know, being around, being able to get around and do almost anything on a bicycle, you know, and just small little details that, that I saw the first time being here that I said, this is a high quality of life. We're yeah. glad you're back now. <laughs> cool. With a new album, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys set out to actually make every record totally different or with totally new perspectives than the previous ones? Uh, yeah, you know, yes, and I, I think it's just a, a natural reflection of, uh, you know, how my life is, you know, as a human being. And, so, you know, we're all growing and changing on an everyday level. And so, you know, months go by and a year goes by and you have a completely different perspective. And so how could your record not sound different in some way, shape or form, you know? For me, music is, is, uh, is therapy and being expressive is a part of a therapy and a part of a me understanding myself and my relationship to the world and to my family and romance and things like that. So, wow. so in what mood are you now? Uh, I'm in a great mood. I've been I've been having springtime and it feels like summertime's coming soon. So, <laughs> okay, well, so this record is springtime and the next record is going to be summertime. I think so. Yeah, I've I always got the feeling that this record was springtime. It started with Bedlam. I had the feeling that Bedlam was winter, was dead winter, darkness, ice cold. You know, just. Well, it was a very difficult record to make and very difficult time spiritually and and uh after that record ended the, the you know what came right after it quite naturally like in the you know in accordance with the laws of the universe is that you know things have to change and mellow out and turn into something else you know and so it felt very much like springtime because I started to see the light at the end of the tunnel and I started to see the colors again and started to see flowers and enjoy life a little more and so yeah we just have this one we just have this this new record but is it true that you already recorded the follow-up to this one? Yeah, I, I recorded it a while ago, but I, I'm not sure that it's the follow-up anymore. Again, that's the problem with uh, with me and, and the fact that I go so much on instinct and the fact that there are portraits of where I'm at is that, uh, you know, this new one, uh, Octahedron, was I finished this last year at the beginning of August, you know, so it's a year old. After that, I did the follow-up. And now for the past couple of months, I'm realizing that the follow-up now sounds boring to me. And so now I'm starting a new record that, that I hope will be uh, more interesting, more current with how I feel now as a person, you know. Why didn't you put it out as a, as a double album then? Uh, because it, I'm not, I, I again, I, I, I don't make records uh, as a mean to an end, you know. I don't make records to say like, okay, and look, here's another one, and look how fast I make records, you know. It's, I make records because they're, again, they're therapy and they're, they're uh, snap, they're like Polaroid pictures of where yeah. I'm at, yeah. And they're, they're a theme of, of my life, and so if I feel that that one is not, is not a, actually how I'm feeling right now or a good reflection you know on on what my ideas are now and what excites me now then it means that there's no reason to put it out and so it sits on my shelf with many 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 other records that sit on my shelf that will never come out oh, sure. introduce yourself and say you're watching toasted I'll get out of the picture uh Toast, toasted. toasted. I'm in love with the process. I'm in love with with the act of doing. I love making records. You know, I love everything that goes around it. I love the people that surround me when I make records. I love the food that I eat when I make records. I love the whole atmosphere. And so then later, then you stop and think about, okay, well, which one should I put out? You know, I'm, I make 10 to 11 records a year, but only four, four of them, four or five come out every year. You know, so it's like beating Zappa's record. Oh, I could never do that. No. <laughs> He did much more, you know. He's a he's an actual real bona fide musician, you know. Oh, come on. I I think of it. Yeah, he is. He he, he won a very, Grammy for Christ's sake. Yeah, but you know what does that mean? That that is. A, <laughs> I mean, it's nice. I, I'm I'm very grateful that that we won. I think it's very cool to to be uh you know to be recognized by you know by a sort of different type of people you know and different type of mentality, but um. You know, again, these are just expressive things for for me, and and I've never uh, I've never considered myself a musician. I was never formally trained in music. I don't know music theory. You know, someone like Zappa is very aware of music theory, very aware of what they're doing. You know, and very much a master. I feel more like a like a caveman drawing pictures on a wall. You know, I just have a lot of pictures to draw. So, uh, how do you do? You actually think music? Because when I listen to your licks, or your guitar parts, it's like you can't write that. I just think of it as images. I think of it as colors or shapes or or, uh, or stories. You know what I mean. And so, so I think of it more as like in the way that actors have to memorize memorize long lines sometimes for a scene or a long big part. You know, I just think of it as a 
moments that are happening that, that are all reflective again of of who I am as a person and what's happening you know in my life and so I think we are all as human beings complicated people because we don't feel one way all the time you know what I mean in what in the span of one day you can be excited you can be happy then you can be mad later on and then you can get in an argument with your woman and then you can be sad because your mother's in the hospital you know we <laughs> we have all this roller coaster of emotions going on inside and my music is just reflective of that that's why people I think perceive it as complicated but really it's no more complicated you know you know what I mean than, than any of us it's just maybe it goes back to again some people create music okay if it works good if it sells let's do it again yeah. and some people create music saying like okay well what what do people want to hear yeah. what you know and maybe people don't want to hear everyday life maybe people don't want complication they want it simple they want pop music so they can yeah, sure. forget about their internal monologue you know I celebrate the internal monologue yeah. is this actually um, the record or the pop record that you guys always threatened to make the quote I read in, uh, in an interview I could see how it's that because it's it's uh, much closer maybe to that sort of uh, that sort of format I mean it's much it's much closer to just the initial intent of a song you know all my songs start off as a the initial structure of any strong of any song like a pop structure verse chorus bridge chorus you know uh, and then eventually I start messing with it and taking out parts and adding parts and when I made this record I, I restrained myself a lot and I let it be the original intent the very first version really you know and that was that was the fun of this record you know and so now I'm off on another tangent and now I do something else and then maybe someday in the future I refine it even more and maybe I actually do make an actual pop record someday. I don't know, you know. I was actually wondering about it because I mean, you can write killer choruses and hooks and stuff that really listen to it once, so you keep singing on it for like 10 years. Is it? Could you actually do that? Write a song, a pop song, two and a half minutes long with a proper intro, <laughs> a break, middle eight, and end? Uh, yeah, I think I could. I mean, I've done it before just for fun, like as a joke. What happens usually to me is like I hear it and it just it doesn't sound good to me. You know, so so I have to like uh, you know rethink it or something. But I think at some point it will sound good to me. That's just the way things work. You know, we are constantly changing as people. So yeah. I think at some point, you know, like Octahedron on my records before it, I had done so much experimenting and so many different types of records that when I got to Octahedron, it felt really good to again have the original intent and not mess with it too much. Yeah. You know, and so maybe now I go off on a tangent and I experiment even more, and at some point it will feel really really good to just. You know, to really refine something and craft something to the point of uh, pure polished. You know, I, I don't know. I don't feel that way now, but I could see how I might, I might feel that way in the future. You know. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. cool. Uh, which camera? This one. Okay. <laughs> Again, I think a lot of people think that there's a lot of there's a high level of intellect that goes into making our music and our titles, and it, it really has nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? It's serious? yeah. It, it it it's it's mostly like what you said. If it sounds great, if it looks great, you use it. If it makes you feel great, you use it. I, when I write my music, if it makes me feel good, I use it. And if I see a word written somewhere, if I'm walking around or in a comic book or in a very interesting book, if you see a word and you, it strikes out to you, you know then. It sticks out to you and it's striking then you write it down and you end up using it you know and then later you go oh shit what does it mean and you look up and you learn you know but i think yeah. everything for me is uh instinct and and uh and just what that first impression is you know i buy a lot of records when i go into a record store uh because i just like the cover i don't know the band but i like the artwork and i go oh what that makes me feel a certain way i'll, I'll buy it and nine times out of ten it's the music's usually good not always but nine times out of ten the music's usually good because i rely very much on my instinct, you know, and I think uh, intellectualizing something is not only boring, but I, I think it's uh, what when you're in the process it would be very boring and very uh, detrimental. I think intellectualizing things come afterwards; they come in retrospect. Mm -hmm. You know, later I go, oh, wait, what did it mean when I was? Oh, okay, I see. Maybe this is what I was feeling. You know, in the same way that we do therapy, you know, and we talk about the past, and then new things come up. You know, you guys have a history of using a lot of drugs. Then you kick the habit. Did you? Are you still? Sober? You don't use drugs, or? Yeah, no, no. I do. I don't uh, use drugs. I don't smoke pot. I don't. I think a lot. Of, I don't drink. I think a lot of people perceive that. Uh, you know, maybe, in a big part of it is because of the history of drug use, and another big part of it is because they think of my music as out there and all this, and so they think that you have to be on some sort of drug to make this kind of music. Well, you wrote a song like a halo of 
Nembutals. Nembutals, yeah. So I, I delved, of course, I delved into that as well. Right, right, right. <laughs> but that has nothing to do with you guys. Right. No, I mean, that's the past. I mean, you know, in the in the past, you know, when I was a kid, you know, uh, from 15 to 23 or 24, whenever it was that I was at the in at the drive-in, you know, I... Uh, I did every drug you could do, and every pill, and every everything else. So of, of course, that's part of your experience, and and you know you take that as inspiration or moments or what you've learned since then. Yeah. But uh, but you know when when I when I started this band, you know my I was you know I was sobering up, I was getting off drugs, and I had a whole new vision of what I wanted my life to be like and what I wanted my music to be like. You know, and that's the vision that I've been that I've been following ever since. You, know. you, you are working on a movie about the band, right? Is that true? Is you're uh, really reflecting on the past? Or? I filmed the band, you know, growth since the beginning. Since I started it, I filmed when I asked Jai Ike to join the band, when I asked people to join the band, our first rehearsals. I filmed concerts. I filmed all the way up until, you know, today. I, I filmed little pieces and so. But I'm not thinking of it yet as, as I'm putting together a film yet. I don't think of it on that. I just think of it as I'm working on it by narrowing down material. You know, again, so that I'm not overwhelmed when it comes time to work on it. I just think the film maybe is something that I'll want to work on once the band is over, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Are we rolling? Apparently do. Hey, John Frusciante is on the album? Uh, yes. Yes, I, I consider him sort of, a, you know, an honorary member of, of, of my group, you know, so... And Paul is not on the album? Uh, no, Paul and Adrián Terraza, I asked to leave, you know, oh. shortly after. Uh, because it was just time for me to have a new direction and f to give the, the band a new direction. And I realized as I was making the record that I wanted to scale the band down and that I wanted to sort of uh, have this approach of uh, simplicity or back to basics or something. You know, I've stripped down our, if you see us tonight, you know, our live setting. You know, I used to have these four amps and two bass amps and I put everything back to how it was in the beginning. I said, I want one guitar amp. I want you to play one bass amp. You know, simple. I want everything simple. I want to sort of wipe the slate clean. You know, it's been eight years, and I feel like I'm starting over now. I feel like it's a a whole new wave of uh, inspiration is coming. So, it's very much you, huh, the band? Uh, yeah, it's it's me and and my my you know, and then my partnership with Cedric, our our relationship, you know, and and our love for each other, you know. I mean, in terms of running the band and making its decisions, it's very much me. But but uh. I think in terms of uh, you know the spirit of what our band is, it's it's all about Cedric and I's ongoing you know uh, you know, rela you know relationship or our romance you know of, of 20 years you know so. Hey, are there any extra special limited edition vinyl songs, uh, CDs, DVDs, games being issued around this album? <laughs> no. Fans can look forward to already. Uh, no, I mean just the vinyl. We always do vinyl. You know, vinyl is super important. It's limited just because no one buys vinyl anymore. You know, now uh, you know uh, culture, the music culture these days is sort of, sort of is like fast food culture now. You know, people they buy songs, iTunes, they. Most of the young people I know don't even know what band they're listening to. They just have it shuffled in their iPod and they're like, oh, I really like this song. And, blah, blah. and it's cool. It's another way of experiencing music, but yeah. I come from a different generation, you know. Of course, festival season is on. Are you playing festivals? And after that, are you coming back to tour? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to come back and do a real tour. I mean, luckily we have, we're doing the festival season, but luckily we have real shows in between, you know. Uh, I mean, festivals are really a drag. And I yeah, think, why? yeah, be because they're just, uh, <laughs> again, they're... You have to understand from a from a from a player's point of view and from a technician's point of view, you don't get to do your thing properly. You know what I mean? It's like you go up that you go there and like, okay, you got one hour and you don't get a sound check and you don't get this and you don't get that and you go you go up pretty much blind. So your technician that you brought doesn't really get to set up and and the house, front of house engineer doesn't really get to do his thing and everybody's just sort of fighting against the elements and when you're playing them. I mean, it's cool because someone can go, uh, you know, a fan of music can go and hear a lot of different bands. But behind the scenes, what's actually happening is you feel like you're the McDonald's of music. But, but you have to look at the bigger picture. Again, I'm saying behind the scenes, it's no fun. But when you think of the bigger picture of like people going and being able to check out different types of music, being in their town and having, you know, an event that they can all go to together and camping and they can enjoy themselves and that's really why you do it because there's a there's a bigger idea there that's that's much bigger than your own personal comfort you know